Media News Live. I am so excited that you guys are here today. Uh, we've got my friend. He's on. Bef- he's been on before. Uh, Kirkner, you need to go out and, and listen to that one because I tell you what, I could have him on almost probably every week because I always Uh-oh. get stuff from him. He's amazing. He's smart. Uh, he has insight. So you guys are going to love this. And bonus, I have bonus. Holy guacamole! It's Lauren Gaggioli here uh, with us today as the co-host sitting in. She is amazing as well, so uh, I can't wait to get her insights as well because she is super smart because she was a guest like two t- two weeks ago or something like that. Yeah. So, Oh, man. Yeah, go ahead and listen turn to that around. one too. Yeah, so anyway, I, I got her back in today because she is smart, and I can just pretty much sit back and press buttons. That's the whole there goal we go. of the, the show. <laughs> um, but I'd love to know, oh, there we got our friend uh, Chris Stone saying bonus uh, what's my, uh, what's up? I think saying what's Chris up, my good friend in the yes. building. I love he it. Is amazing over on LinkedIn. So appreciate you guys. As we're going along today, uh, do us a favor, sprinkle the love across the interwebs. Let people know yeah. about this. If you're wanting to know about content trends and strategies, which we're going to be talking about today, uh, call them into the conversation. At mention them down below. Let them know about it. They can even catch it on the replay if they can't make it live. But that helps us out. And also ask your questions. As we're talking with Kirk today, I'm telling you this. This dude is smart. You want to ask those questions, and I'll try to pull them up as on screen as I get them, and we can uh, discuss that as we're going along today because you don't want to miss this. But I appreciate all of you being here. Thank you so much, Lauren. Your as your yes, kids are your kids left the building? Building? Are you still? Uh, it's, it's relatively quiet. Relatively quiet I, right but now. I'm I'm not in charge. Mommy's off duty. So. There you go. Off That's duty. good. That's I good. Figure it out. <laughs> All right. So but I'm going to go ahead. Screaming, I'll mute myself. <laughs> That's right. You'll be good. You'll be fine. We've had weirder things happen on the show than kids talking. Um, so oh, yeah. what I'm going to do is, uh, first of all, say howdy to uh, Dustin Stout, who is waving with us. And we had him on, him on a couple weeks talk, talking about his awesome AI tool, uh, Magi. So we're going to talk about some AI stuff today. And Dealcasters nice. fangirling over here. I think this is... Um, this may be still Chris Stone, I think. Yeah, he's fangirling. Uh, Kirk is that dude. <laughs> so uh, anyway, uh, we're going to get started. I'm going to hit go on the podcast machine, and here we go. Hello, folks. Welcome to Social Media News Live. I'm Jeff C., and you're not. (laughs) And I'm Lauren Gaggioli, and maybe you are too. This is the show that keeps you up to date on what's happening in the world of social media and more. So today, I am so excited that we have such an exceptional guest joining us, the renowned Kirk Nugent. Now, Kirk is an expert in content creation and marketing. He's got insights that's gonna uh, transform the way we think about engaging our audience. Uh, In in this episode, we're gonna be diving into content trends and strategies, the power of audience engagement. So this is how it's gonna roll out today. We're gonna be exploring the latest trends in content creation. We're gonna try to understand the critical difference between audience size and engagement, and also unlock the mysteries of push and pull marketing strategies. So we got a bunch of stuff to cover today. A lot. This promises to be an amazing conversation, uh, so sit back, tune in, and let's start this conversation with Kirk Nugent. How are you doing today, my friend? Man, I'm doing well. Every time I can come through and hang out uh, <laughs> with your, you and your audience, I am excited. So I'm doing well, man. And It's a Friday, you know, so let's right. go for it. Right, right. So let me introduce you to Kirk real quick. If you if you missed him on our show previously, make sure you go back and listen to that. Uh, but let me introduce you. He is an expert live stream coach and accomplished content creator. Kirk Nugent mm-hmm. has reinvented how small businesses, entrepreneurs, and faith-based entities reach the world. Whether he's engaged in one-on-one training to help those who seek to grow their business or he's captivating audience through Amazon and CNN with his expertise oh. as a product ambassador, Kirk's goal is to help organizations leverage innovation. And as the host and producer of the show, How It All Works, he believes that corporations, no matter their size, should stop selling, start streaming, and let the clients come to you. Kirk, you mentioned before you just rolled out a new show. I want you to go ahead, since we just mentioned this in the bio, oh, yeah. How It Works. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Talk about your new show. The new show is called Incubator's Couch. It is unscripted, vulnerable conversations with content creators, but also business owners and entrepreneurs just like you. And uh, my wife and I host that. It happens um, Mondays at 7 p.m. Uh, Central Time. So that's eight for our folks in the East and that's five for our folks out West. And we just kind of bring people in. We've we've coined a couple of phrases that I think resonate with some of you. I'll just share one of those. And that phrase is, um, have you ever 
ever had a client Zilla? Mm, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you can see them in the wild. You know, they, they make a specific call. <laughs> no, no, there's different species of them, right? Client Zillas come in all shapes, forms, and sizes. And if you understand what I mean when I say client Zilla, you probably want to come check out the Incubator's Couch. So, yeah, thank you so much for allowing me to plug that real quick. Yeah, that's, that's well, it's an exciting I'm, I'm, project that we've got going on. Yeah. I tell you, man, anything you do, it's, it's always great. And I love uh, seeing it all. So, uh, something else I want to push really quick before something else that is is amazing and, and really great as well is our friends over at ecam they're the ones who help make this show possible you can find out more about them Absolutely. at socialmedianewslive.com forward slash ecam by the way they've got this really cool um creator camp coming out that's right. october 11th through the 13th i'm going to be there as a camp counselor our friend leslie samuel is actually the camp director but we're going to be going around doing some fun sh uh, stuff learning about podcasting uh, live video, all that stuff. If you want to oh, yeah. be a part of that, you guys need to come. They're going to be doing like a, a pub crawl, Salem ghost tours, all this stuff for fun, but then also all the learning that goes on during the day. You don't want to miss it. October uh, 11th through 13th. And you can find out more about that at ecam.tv forward slash creator camp. So go yep. check I, that out. I will be out. there too. Oh, you're going to be there too? To, yeah, yeah. I didn't know that. Be there. That's I'm gonna not going to awesome. be teaching. I'm just going to be there because so many, I saw the lineup. Oh. I was like, there's no way I'm missing this. So I book, book the time on my calendar. <laughs> See, even better. You guys need to come. You can hang out with uh, Kirk there as well. So absolutely. All right, let's jump right into this because I know we're going to have a ton of questions here. I want to talk about mm. content creator trends. So Kirk, you've been doing this for a long time. So tell us how have you seen content creation like evolve over the past few years? It's gone from a novelty, you know, something that was kind of, you know, entertaining, you know, cat videos are still a thing, right? <laughs> right. <laughs> but it, it's, it's, it's gone from kind of that where you're just like, oh, let me scroll a little. I'm, I've got some time to waste to where it's critical. I, 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 my, the company that my wife and I run, we produce uh, events and shows for clients. And last night I actually had the opportunity to produce a graduation and oh, cool. several of the uh, eighth grade graduates uh, shared like, you know, while we love you teachers, uh, YouTube and Google have been our friends. Uh, so we've learned a lot. So, I, I mean, I'm saying that to say content creation has kind of shifted. It's morphed. It's no longer just this, oh, let me be entertained. It's, it's actually mm -hmm. becoming very much a critical resource uh, for us in our everyday lives. In fact, um, for those who are actually content creators, it has gone from being a side hustle. It's gone from being this thing that we do is a, is a, is a guilty pleasure almost to literally people are building empires, like literal empires with content creation. Um, and here's the last piece I'll say in terms of how content creation has evolved. TV and film, TV and film essentially uh, are being eaten alive by <laughs> content creation. <laughs> I mean, there's no other way to say it. Uh, if you look at The Chosen, whether you're a believer or not, I think that this is a, a, a case study for all of us to kind of see what's possible if we take content creation through to its natural conclusions, right? Um, crowdsourced, no big production house, but all of the earmarks, all of the same level of quality, and it's released on YouTube. Yeah. <laughs> and millions of subscribers. Why is that working? Because content creation has evolved. It is no longer what it was. It is absolutely something that most people, I would say, majority of the world even, um, is now involved in in one shape, form, or fashion, whether you consume it or you are helping to create it. Yeah, content creation, not something we can forget, not something we can count out. It has absolutely evolved. Wasn't The Chosen, isn't it the biggest crowdfunded uh, ever? Like, isn't it like it's ever. It's broken all the records? Yeah, okay. All the records. Um, and then just they're creating. <laughs> I got a chance to hear, um, oh, I forget his name now, at, at Social Media Marketing World this past March. He, he shared Yes. So I got a chance to yeah. hear him and, and chat with him a little bit afterwards. But some of the stuff that they're doing is, is quite literally breaking the mold um, and, and, and re reinventing how people can imagine how they can bring their projects to life. Uh, one of the things he said was he they hope to create with their show to 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 create an environment with their show where other creators are creating multiple pieces of content based on them releasing an episode. That's actually one of their goals. I've never heard anybody say anything like that before, mm -hmm. not from the TV or film industry. Like we want you to create content based on our show. 
Wow. That's amazing. That yeah. is cool. So far reaching implications there just in terms of licensing and like the shift in mindset around that, mm -hmm. uh, who owns what and, and when, where does that, where does that live now? <laughs> yeah. Sort of in yeah, the middle, yeah. It's in transition. So with this trend towards content creators becoming, you know, coming more to the fore as a serious entity and, and in often cases for creators, a business, a what are business, some of the yeah. trends that you're seeing that marketers and really everybody else should be aware of beyond Hollywood, maybe more of us like everyday folk, everyday <laughs> folks. Yeah. There's uh, a couple of trends that I can, I can share right off the bat. I, I got a chance. Like, so first I'll just say in one sentence, audience is critical. Mm -hmm. Audience is critical. I, I got a chance to be part of, um, one of these, you know, uh, predictions for uh, what's going to happen in live video. And I, I my, my prediction was your audience will be the ticket to play on certain playgrounds. And we see that already happening in terms mm -hmm. of, you know, you can't get an Amazon influencer account. You can't you're not even enabled to go live unless you have a specific size audience. Well, I think that that you can take that, extrapolate that out a little bit. Um, um, here's here's one example. I was chatting with a couple of dads um, at my school, my son's school, and they were saying to me after they found out what I do, they said, man, I would love if you could put together a package where I will record the videos of my son playing baseball um all you know at all the different games but if you could just help me kind of put them in a nice cool package and put them on a youtube channel somewhere so that i have this documentation of my son playing and i was like okay we could do that is there a reason i mean do you want this his aunts and uncles to see he's like no uh, everybody that's being accepted to college um and getting the full ride the difference maker is literally that they have an audience yeah yeah, the difference maker is that they have an audience is that this kid, yeah, he plays well, but this kid, he's got an audience. And so that audience piece becomes more critical. I, I did a consult session with an author uh, last week, and he's saying to me, he just got turned down for a publishing deal. The publisher said, you don't have an audience. You've got to have an audience. We, we need you to have an audience. And I think we're going to see this more and more. I, I'm a, a, another person that's in the acting world in Hollywood got turned down for an acting gig, didn't have a large enough audience. Literally, they're telling them, it's not even like they're, you know, it's vague, they're clothed, cloaking this thing, they're telling them, you've got to have an audience. So for the everyday person, right? Um, makeup artists, barbers, right? <laughs> Lawn care specialists, go down the line, doesn't matter. <laughs> you don't have an audience, you actually don't have social proof. Social proof meaning people who have engaged with your content people who have seen what it is that you do and they're they love it they have booked you because of it um so yeah 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 <laughs> it's, it's 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 a whole other world that we're looking at now when we talk about what what are some of the trends that we need to be aware of i that's a motivator like right uh, that's a whole business model like that the, those dads that said to me that whole baseball thing i could shut down everything else i'm doing and just go after that one line right. one market line and i probably make a good amount of money so there is there's there's a there's a lot of different pieces when we think about content um there's just so many different ways and aspects of of, of regular everyday life that we just forget that oh yeah that is how i buy that oh that is why i got that oh <laughs> yeah that is how I employ that service. Oh, yeah. I did ask my my hairstylist to tag me in the reel, right? So <laughs> right. It's, yeah. it's, we just we just I think we we're it's so ingrained in our lives now we forget. Um, and and that role that it plays for the business provider for whoever it is. I mean, your 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 ability to make live make a livelihood, right? Can sometimes yeah. be tied to the fact that you have or don't have an audience. So we're going to talk about audience in a minute. And I know Gary, uh, I thought he had a, he had a great point. He goes, he's never heard of that before for college. I'm hearing more and more people that it makes a big difference. And like, even mm -hmm. especially like Kirk was saying with publishers, but we'll talk about that in audience because I want to make sure we, yeah, yeah, yeah. but, but b before we pass on trends, we've got to ask the question. And I know Dustin's here and he talked about this a couple weeks ago uh, because he has a great tool that deals with this is mm -hmm. AI because I want to, wow. I want to talk about what your creator a lot of people become threatened by, you know, this AI stuff that's running out, especially if you're a writer or if you're like a visual artist. There's a lot of scary stuff. If that's your niche that, that I'm in those both of those worlds and I'm reading all the stuff that they're saying. Mm -hmm. um, so I want to talk about that and innovation and what you think of AI as a creator. So I, so I love I, I think AI is great. Um, 
for what it is. I think it is. it was uh, probably in some ways a natural next step to where we, we are and where we are currently. There are a lot of people who have varying, like totally polarizing different views in terms of AI. It's coming to take our jobs. And, and for those that feel that way, let me just pause here and say, um, you're probably right. If you're afraid that AI is going to take your job and you're not doing anything except for, you know, yelling at the, at the screen, um, you're probably right. You're probably one of those that it will take your job because you're not doing anything to leverage AI in your current job. Uh, one of the things I used to say to folks in, and when I worked in higher ed is it, it didn't matter which, what your vocation was, what your, you know, declared major was. Um, I was a CIO, but I got a chance to in interact with a lot of students on the campus. And I would say to them, learn the technology relevant to your skill set. If you learn the technology relevant to your skill set, you will rise. So if you're in the chemistry uh, world and you are learning how to use this new beaker, when you pour the solution, it's already sending information back to your computer. Because you know that technology, you have a leg up on all your counterparts. And this is what I'm saying for anybody. It doesn't matter where you are. Learn how AI is affecting your industry. These are some of the things that we just have to do. Um, one of the things my dad loves to tell me is like, you want to be a lifelong learner. Um, and, and he has exemplified that. I, I watched him mm -hmm. completely reinvent himself so many different times. AI is this next wave. Look, when when www dot came out, right, when there, was, <laughs> right. there was email addresses. People literally lost their minds. Like, What's going on? How can we how are we going to use this? And to be clear, there were people listen to this who just sat in businesses all day long and typed emails like I, Jeff, would take my my right. written note, take it to the email operator. They would type it up, click send. When the person responded, <laughs> they would print that out and give it to you. That was somebody's job. Yeah. Why did they get that job? Because they figured out how to leverage what what technology was doing at that moment. We're at another moment now. This is another moment. What you do will determine whether this thing steamrolls you. Right. Or if you ride that wave. Right. Mm -hmm. I mean, you could be the person that's like, I'm your AI interpreter. Oh my, I think that's a whole new. Oh, thing. there you go. Yeah. I'll, be your, I'll be your AI right here. interpreter, right? That's so, it. I, I'm going on LinkedIn right now to change my, my title because that's, that's my, right. I'm your AI interpreter. You want to understand AI? Come to the AI interpreter. Folks are like, what? Is that even a the, thing? Uh, or the AI, AI whisperer. <laughs> the AI whisperer. AI whisperer. Oh, see, now I got to go register. Sorry, we're going to take a break. No, just kidding. Um, so Justin says this. He goes, and he knows this because, I mean, he's building an entire tool around this. And Kirk, if you haven't played with uh, Magi, it's amazing. I uh, need to. Oh, I need to. Great. And he was on a couple weeks ago. So you guys check out Dustin's show. But he goes, here's the thing about AI. It still needs a human to prompt it. This is why creators are still the future. Creators who leverage AI will win. Lauren, what are your, what are your, I know you come from the education background. So I, I know you have some some questions for Kirk. So go ahead. So go I, I just, I, the, for me, <laughs> just from the educational standpoint, I worry about, uh, and to your point, it it's a tool. And you it's can use it for, for good or for evil. And so I worry about it in the hands of children without critical thinking skills, maybe, to like mm -hmm. wrestle with how it's best leveraged. I mm -hmm. once had a student tell me that Louisa May Alcott loved the movie interpretation of Little Women, all of them. And mm -hmm. I went, uh, and she goes, well, I saw it on her Wikipedia. So oh, no. this is not new. This is not like kids are always going to try and find a way to like shortcut the work. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I do. I do think it has some implications. We have to be careful about how we leverage it. Right. And, and this is um, this is so great. I, I don't I hate that. Sorry. Go ahead. Let me let you know. No, no, no. No, because I want to jump in right there and say this is so great because this is what the educator brings to the to the space, because yes. what you're saying isn't. It's something that I know, right? I know it that out there. It's 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 something that I know, but I don't. It's not my part of my lived experience. And so, for you as an educator, how do you get in and engage with AI by helping to create those fail safes and those safeguards, those guardrails? That's the term I was trying to yes. come up with. But yeah, those helping to create those guardrails so that we do have that caveat, that asterisk, right? To say, just let's let's make sure that this is actually the thing. Let's make sure that this is actually correct. Uh, let's not just take whatever the AI gives us as, as, as if it's gold and as if it's a gospel. And I think, you know, somebody, I, I, I'm missing the comments here, but somebody in the chat said, it, it's creators uh, are st will still have to input the things, right? So AI prompt writer, like there's, 
you're still going, we, we as humans still have to give it the information. Um, and, and as they say, Gigo, right? Garbage in and garbage out. Mm -hmm. So if you, if we give the AI garbage, we will get back garbage. And so how do we create those gatekeepers who are going to ensure that the information the AI is working off of is actually good information. It's correct information. Um, and then, and then that's because I never, never want to eliminate the human component. I right. think the onus is still on us, right? To, to go and understand. I, I said this to you during the pandemic, we had a lot of people who just jumped up and said, hey, I'm streaming now. Um, and I'm saying, okay, streaming comes out of broadcast. And uh, myself, Doc Rock, several others, we, we're constantly beating this drum of, you, you don't need to become a broadcaster, but you do need to understand the history to recognize why do we do a countdown clock? Like what, why do we have these, these kinds of things in streaming or because it finds its roots in broadcast and understanding that history and having reverence and respect for it is how you continue to be relevant by using the platforms now. It's like, well, you're breaking all the rules. You, you don't shine a light at a glass and hope that you know everything's mm -hmm. gonna work well. You're breaking all the rules, right? right. So at, at the end of the day, there are gonna be novices that enter the space who don't come with that reverence and respect for the history of how we got to where we currently are. And we do need those gatekeepers to help us stay true and stay honest. Um, and, and yes, absolutely. You, people, educators need to be in the space as well. So I view it as like a scaffold that we're standing on versus trying to subvert the work, right? Trying to go around it by going through this new technology. Mm. Mm. That's good. Well, see, Dustin has a, he has a great example of that. He was, like my that. wife is an English language arts teacher. She's running Magi and we're working through ways to help her students in middle school use AI tools responsibly. responsibly. So that's very cool. And, and back to your point, you know, about, and like Dustin's wife and, you know, other educators I've talked to like Lauren, um, one of the things is things change. Like we're still not using an abacus most of the time in, <laughs> in school. I mean, some schools maybe, but, uh, and also like I, I look out and I don't see a blacksmith on every street corner like there used to be. Like there's still blacksmiths and they, and we used yes, to have horses and we still have farriers who come out and shoe horses, oh. but there aren't as many as we used to be. That's so right. things change. And so um, I, I, I think we have to be careful because some things can be scary and we, and I'm always about protecting artists. I think that's important and how we can we do that, but also we can't put it back in the bag. I mean, it's already out. Like it's, <laughs> it's out. you know, it's, it's, you know, it's like kids are already yeah. using it to write their, you know, their, um, their papers with. So, yeah. um, and we'll continue, but anyway, awesome. This has been great. So like we could do a whole yeah. show on this, uh, because it is oh, it's straight up. <laughs> yeah. It is just so much stuff and it's so fascinating and interesting and it affects not just, I mean, marketers because we can use it and it's a great tool i love using it um but you know uh, as it trickles into other parts of the the, the you know industry it's going to be really really exciting but let's talk about this because we've touched on it before you, you're talking about audience earlier uh kirk and one of the things mm -hmm. i know when people say you know and like even gary's like really you have to do that to get into call you know get a scholarship now and when we say audience we think of i've got to be a gary v or I've got to be, you know, you know, uh, Lauren Gaggioli or, who, you know, somebody you know, uh, or Kirk, you know, but audience doesn't mean you have to be have this huge audience. Do you? I mean, what what is the role of audience in the success of a content creators platform? Because I, I think we need to talk about that because it, it seems like an, a huge goal for some people. Like I can't, you know, I, my my mom follows me and that's about it. <laughs> thanks. And thanks, no, mom, uh, by the way. <laughs> thanks, 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 mom. Uh, my mom is one of one of my biggest followers. Right. But I will say that there's there's a difference between, um, and I don't know. Maybe maybe I'm I'm jumping ahead here, but there's a difference between audience numbers and audience engagement. I think okay. there, yeah, there's there's you you content is created to directly target a particular audience, right? And so. What are some of the things that you're actually showing people with your content? So for the, you know, eighth grader who plays baseball, what, what are we trying to show with that content? So those, those dads or whoever is going to have to figure out what are we trying to act? Cause if we're just creating a, a, a basically a portfolio of, of right. playing baseball, that's actually not successful. That's not going to get picked up by the algorithm. Who's going to watch that. So there's, we've got to add a component of it. That's going to help or entertain or educate in some way, shape, form, or fashion. That's actually content creation at its core. So when you, once you are successful at that, 
the algorithm kind of helps. And this is the, the, the beauty of, of content creation. The algorithm kind of takes it and says, oh, so you're actually looking for these kinds of people. And these kinds of people are on the platform searching for these things. So I'm just going to pair the two. And that's where you get that organic growth. Does it have to be thousands, if not tens of thousands, if not hundreds of thousands? No, absolutely not. There is a component of your audience that will be engaged. Um, there's a component of your audience who will, they'll say things like, man, I didn't know how to do this. And I started watching Jeff and now I've, I've got a whole, you know, uh, social media platform that has helped me to, you know, land new clients, um, do different things, uh, open new doors, bring in referral based opportunities. It has allowed me to be discoverable in so many different ways. Those kinds of testimonies, that, that kind of engagement, that's actually the higher uh, metric, in my opinion, for people to, to, to determine, okay, what are what do have you done online? And how have you engaged? So from from an audience perspective, Am I looking at, or are the gatekeepers looking at numbers? In fact, even Amazon is not necessarily looking at subscriber count or follower mm -hmm. count. They're actually looking to see how are you engaging your audience? Do you have influence? See, a lot of people want to use the term influencer just to blanket mean you've created YouTube videos. Nope, it's not true. <laughs> you can actually be an entertainer and not an influencer. Yeah. You can be you could be, uh, you can, you can create content that people absolutely love to watch, but it is not influencing them in any way, shape, form, or fashion. Mm. But if you establish that you have the components, the capability in your content to influence how people uh, make their decisions, um, what types of platforms they use, uh, how they go about doing their everyday things, you know, what type of soap they use? I mean, come on, like how, what kind of glasses they put on, or, you know, what type of tech they employ? If you have it demonstrated in your content that you have the ability to influence, that's actually what an influencer is. And I think there's a huge difference between that and just having an audience for the sake of having, having an audience. I, I have one coaching client and I, I know we got to, we got to go, but I have one coaching client who, <laughs> who had a viral video, like a viral video, right. um, because of a studio setup tour that he did. His channel is about graphic design. It's not about a studio setup. So he just happened to do this studio setup tour. And because he's a graphic designer, his studio is dope. Uh, 4,000 subscribers later, now we're, we're trying to figure out what do we do? Because all of those subscribers, they yeah. subscribed for studio setup. They didn't subscribe for graphic design. So every time he puts out a graphic design video, it tanks his, his numbers because nobody wants to watch it. You see what I'm saying? So yeah. I think we, we've got to we got to kind of walk through some of those pieces and, and essentially understand. Yeah, having influence, yeah, yeah, it's 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 definitely greater, greater than, than having a large audience. Absolutely. Yeah. So what can content creators do to create engagement? I mean, I have to think with your graphic designer that their content drew some folks who are the right people. And then mm -hmm. he delivered what they actually wanted. It was like the next step. Is that a natural progression or is this, do we try to get to the studio tour faster? And how do we do mm, that? I, so in engagement, uh, it, it, so essentially when, what I like to say to folks is that this, this whole content creator, even live streaming thing is a two way street. There are people in the comments right now. I'm looking at their comments. Um, the three of us are on screen. We're having a conversation. Two-way street meaning there is two sides of the conversation. We're not just shouting into the ether. We're, mm -hmm. We actually are waiting for a re response that comes back. And that actually is the definition of engagement. One of the things I often do, this is a free one for anybody that's out there, is I go in the comments of similar YouTubers as me because they're not, they, my, my counterparts, uh, colleagues who are also on YouTube creating similar content to me, they're not in the comments. So I go in mm -hmm. their comments, I look at the questions that their people are asking that have gone unresponded to months. And I say, oh, cool, here's my next video. It's mm -hmm. a two way street. So now mm -hmm. I put out a video and some, some of the audience may feel like, oh, you're, you are starting the conversation by putting out the video. No, actually I am responding to the conversation by putting out the video. 
that's engagement at its cores. I am trying to understand what is going to be the next best thing for me to put on my channel that's going to scratch where my audience is itching, that's going to answer a question, and that will further allow me to have this two-way conversation um, and, and, and then allow me to grow organically. And, and then once I put out the video, <laughs> newsflash, I actually go in the comments <laughs> <laughs> and I respond to the comments on my video. And I've got several e testimonials of people who would say, I, I watched four videos on this exact same thing, but the only person that was actually responding to comments is you. So I subscribe here. Mm -hmm. Engagement is actually part of your audience's decision matrix as well, right? So not just that you've answered my question, not just that you're engaging, not just that you are speaking in a way that, you know, kind of resonates with me because I'm not for everybody, but also can I get a word in, in this conversation? Like, would you talk to somebody who you never got a chance to speak back to? I wouldn't. That's <laughs> engagement. That's engagement. And I think we, we, a, a lot of times we just, and, 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 and to be clear, as we go back to that audience size piece, you can't engage with a million subscribers. <laughs> it's hard. Yeah. It's just impossible. It's impossible. So there is a law of diminishing re returns. Uh, if you have a 6,000 uh, subscriber channel and you have maybe say 500 of those who are really engaged, like super fans, let me tell you, you you're, you're good. You, yeah. you don't need any more than that. I can't even serve all 500, not, right. not at scale. Yeah. So this is uh, this is really really good stuff because I think one it gives people hope that you know it's, when they see like a Mr. Beast or somebody like that they're like Ugh, oh my I'm, word you know you know but being able to and this is why I love live video like I'm able to go in and talk with Dustin and pull his comment up and we can talk about it yep. they feel like they're yep. a part of it they feel like if they have a question they can come in there the and and I, yeah <laughs> and I think what you're doing because you're using a cheat code with your YouTube stuff. You're going in there, you're seeing what somebody else is asking a question and didn't get answered, and you're going in there and providing a video that gets found, and, and then you bring them into your fold. I want to go back a little bit because of the, the when you're talking about the, the size and the, um, the engagement part of it. So let's pretend, so let's say you did get this, these baseball dads as your client, mm -hmm. right? And so, mm -hmm. and you're like, well, okay, you can't just make videos of your son playing baseball because only your family is going to care about that. Nobody else is. What would you do? How would you tell them to drive engagement in that situation? Would you have him start doing maybe like, hey, I use this certain baseball glove because I feel like it gives me a good grip and like and have him put out content like that that would drive people to him where he could start to have engagement? What what let's just kind of have a hypothetical like client hypothetical because I think I it's really easy because way. that's something that most people know. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, I wouldn't, yes, it would be how to, there are some how to things that I would infuse into the content, but really what I, what I would ask those dads and, and specifically the, the, the son, in this case, it was, it was a son, but I know that, you know, there are girls that play baseball too. So we were trying to keep that thing general, yeah. but uh, for, in this case, I would ask them, the father and son, what is your appetite towards content creation and, and, and specifically daily vlog. Um, and, and, and now we're not necessarily talking about how to, or, Hey, I use this. Hey, I use that. Hey, here's how I've increased my grip. No, it's, it's actually me just creating content, man. I'm getting ready to go this game. I don't feel good today. Cause I ate a burrito earlier and <laughs> I, it's not really setting well with me. Uh, but I'm going to try and play through, man. Uh, let's, let's see what happens. Then you come with the reaction after the game. Of course you show some pieces of you hitting you, you, maybe you even say, man, I, I changed this. I, maybe I took this pill. Maybe I drank this drink and that helped to kind of settle my stomach and, you know, just the energy in the, in the crowd. And yeah, it wasn't that many people there, but when I, when I got up to bat and I hit that thing. That is something that people will not only watch because they're, oh man, so did he make it? You know what I mean? It's like, right. I, I, did he, did, was he able to, to be successful? And now you have this trajectory, you have this journey, you're allowing people in, right? I, I like to you know, work based off of these three things, right? Uh, answer a question, um, be consistent and be vulnerable. Those are the three things I, I, I try to infuse into every you know, piece of content I put out there. And then I also try to help my clients do the same. And I'm saying with that daily vlog, and maybe not daily, maybe weekly, right? Mm -hmm. Maybe you put out a video a week. Uh, maybe you put out a video a month and then you put out videos on special occasions. I don't know, whatever it is, you got to make it sustainable for you because consistency right. is a huge component, but it's really, yeah, I'm going to show you how I'm doing what I'm doing, but I'm sharing with you from the perspective of this. I'm just living. 
I'm not just sharing it from the perspective of like, I'm the expert, watch me. I'm more sharing it from this perspective of like, well, not really sure what to do, to do today. But uh, they said we're gonna, when they're going to be, <laughs> this, this pitcher can throw a, fa- a spitball. I've never hit a spitball before. Mm-hmm. I, I would watch that content. And I would say there's a lot of other people out there that would watch that content too. I, I'm still learning, but I'm also engaged. And here's the best part. I am vested in the success of this baseball player. Mm. Now, so, I'm, now I'm like, okay, if that guy gets to the big leagues, it's like, yo, I've been watching him since he was doing the daily vlogs back when he was in Pee Wee. So yeah. Don't, yeah, that's the thing. Yes. Yeah. So uh, before I throw it back to you, Lauren, I, I want to have something that uh, talk about the, the audience size and what you're really saying, uh, Kirk, earlier about it's, it's that influence is making, you're able to move the needle, right? You're able to make yes. a difference for those people. And that was what's cool that I noticed. And I consider myself like, you know, teeny tiny. And when I got in the Amazon program, what we t- talked about, the amount of companies that come after you as soon mm-hmm. as they see you're an Amazon influencer, like they know That's that that right. moves the needle for their things and they start contacting you. And, you're, and, and, and all my friends who are in the same program, they, they're not huge either, and, but they're having the same thing. So that tells me that they understand and companies are starting to become more and more wise about that these small or micro or nano or whatever you want to call them influencers can move the needle if they're doing it in the right way. Yeah, there's a saying that goes, um, I'm not new to this, you're just new to me. <laughs> and, and there's yeah, yeah it's just, it's, you're just new to me so i like i say to people all the time i've only been on youtube consistently for the last three years but i've been doing what i'm doing forever right like influencing I, i'll sit down with friends and be like oh yeah we, we're trying to figure out this oh man you got to get this thing over here i'm not trying to sell them i've got no affiliate link i didn't even know that was a thing before but right. i would still it's the same process that I would go through. I'm just having to turn on the camera and do it live for, you know, whoever wants to watch on Amazon. So yeah, I'm not new to this. You're just new to me. And so we just, I think that brands are recognizing, oh, this person actually has that it thing, that component doesn't, you know, so now I'm not so concerned about the size, the size will come, their audience size will, will grow. I want to get to them before their audience gets too big. And that price gets big more than I could afford. So there's, <laughs> there's that whole balancing act that you, you know, you want to play into there as well. And speaking to the balancing act, I'm, I'm wondering, because um, it feels like there might be a tipping point here, like obviously engagement, you made the point you can't engage with a million people. So is there like a sweet spot where like, systems that we can put in place to sort of ensure that we are leaning into engagement rather than growth? Or is there like, how do you play both sides of that? Where is there a flip? Like where, how do we manage Mm. that from like a strategic standpoint as the creator? Yeah. If you're, if your content creation is of a nature that if your why is numbers, you will quit. (laughs) That's just, that's Kirk's, take that from Kirk. Maybe if you disagree, I'm just saying your why needs to be bigger than that. So if your why is I want to help this particular audience do this, or Mm -hmm. I want to share with people my issue and struggle with this and in the process, maybe find others who have the same thing and help them, whatever that why might be, that's who you want to engage with. The, if you seek engagement as, as, as others have shared with me, if you seek to serve your, you will grow. The, the numbers will come. I mean, you, you might not even be concerned about that, but they'll come. And you will continue to engage with those who really need your help, who really need the content, who you may be somebody comes in new, maybe you have a couple of, you know, you have audience members who have followed you for a long time. You've actually helped, helped them to get over the hurdle. And now the, you're helping new ones. And those new, those old audience members, those, that's what I call veterans, right? The OGs who've been mm-hmm. following me since when I had the C920 camera sitting on the desk in front of me <laughs> and used to fall over and I would reach over and pick it up and put it back up and we would all <laughs> laugh. Like those guys, those guys are now my moderators. Those guys are now, you know, in my membership community. Those guys are teaching others what I taught them. So you, in terms of scaling and and being able to serve a larger audience is that you, you want to duplicate yourself. Um, you want to give people ways that they can engage with you that does not require you to physically engage with them. So mm-hmm. you wanted to learn so-and-so. Okay. I just did a course, right? <laughs> so mm-hmm. you want to learn to script. Jeff C's got a course that's coming out next month. Jeff C can't teach all of us, but he created a course. 
And so now at scale and, and at your own leisure, right, on demand, you can take a course from Jeff C. You've already engaged with Jeff C. Jeff C is your guy. You've already subscribed. You love him. Jeff C is giving you another way that you can engage with him that does not require him physically touching 2,000, 3,000, 10,000 people. They can all engage with that course without actually him doing that work. So some of it is going to be expanding your group, expanding your, your, your core team, but some of it's just going to be doing things that allow you to serve your audience at scale. So, yeah, I, so I think you, there are definitely systems there as well. So you've used product <laughs> Using Jeff as an example. <laughs> sorry, sorry, say it one more time. You, you, you view products as an extent, a natural extension of that engagement. Absolutely. I think your okay. engagement will determine when it's time for you to start putting out digital products that people can engage with. Yeah. So, uh, you know, you mentioned the OG and I, it's funny that you say that because one of my OGs at Dustin is, an, I call them, I call them BBFs before beard friends. Like they knew me before <laughs> I had the beard. <laughs> And so oh, Dustin good. is one of them. He's a BBF. There's a couple of them uh, in the audience, but I appreciate them always sticking around and supporting me. One of the things, um, you know, we're, we're talking about, you know, growth. And I know there's some, some people who are, you know, just getting started. And I always try to give them, I mean, um, Chris said, had this great comedy goes, so true. So many people think that these creators are new to the scene. It's important to know that they've been uh, here for years putting in the reps. But there's also, reps. And, 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 but I thought it was really encouraged what you said is like, you don't have to be perfect to start sharing content because you mentioned like as this baseball player is going, the stuff he's learning yeah. and, and sharing that with the yeah. audience. I think that is key because people think that you have to be an, uh, like this expert and know 100% what to do all the time for everything. Like I need to be a, you know, like uh, Kirk Nugent. Like I know all these camera stuff or like Chris Stone. I know all about the microphones before I can start right. creating content. And it's not true. Like I do a wood carving show over on Amazon and I am not, I'm like, there's some really good wood, wood carvers on YouTube. I am nowhere near them, but people still like to engage with me when I'm doing this wood carving stuff live wood because carving. they can yeah. see themselves. I think like, Oh, I can get better. That's, I see him making that's progress, it. that kind of thing. Yeah. So I think that's really that's important for people so to know good. for encouragement. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I often say to folks, you, you may not be an expert in their topic area, but you're an expert in you. Mm. And so as long as your story and your content is about you and your engagement with whatever topic area you choose to do, um, you're still the expert, right? I, I can't tell you what works for you, but I can tell you my experience. So when I turned on the light, I got this look. When yeah. I turned off the light, I got this look. Now, somebody else may say it a different way, <laughs> right. but I'm sharing with you my lived experience. And I, I that's unequivocal. That's non-negotiable. You can't argue with me about what I have lived. So, mm. right, yeah, that's good. So something that I have lived is how amazing Ecamm is. See how that just, oh, just, yeah. just went right over there. So we appreciate <laughs> them for, sponsor, for sponsoring the show. You can find out more about them at socialmedianewslive.com forward slash Ecamm. Seriously, they they are amazing. And once again, they're having a creator camp. Kirk is going to be there. I will be there. Ooh. Leslie Samuels is going to be there. All, I think Jim and Chris are going to be there, if I'm not mistaken. So, so you guys want to no, go. I need to sign up. You need to go, Laura, <laughs> and you would like it. You it's know. crazy. Fun. Yeah, so yeah. you can find up uh, find you can sign up at ecam.tv forward slash creator camp. Make sure to hang out there. There's some really cool people. We've got some guests coming on, like Diana Gladney is going to be on, Leslie Samuel oh, yeah, is going to be on. Be They're going to be there as yeah. well. So um, you want to come to this because it's really really cool. So ecam.tv forward slash creator camp. Go check that out. All right, our last segment. This is going to be interesting because uh, I wanted to hear what uh, Kirk <laughs> said about this. So push versus pull marketing. So yeah. talk about this. What is the difference between push versus pull marketing in this content of the, what we've been talking about today, content creation? Yeah. So I, uh, th this, this is this is uh, this is definitely one of the areas I, I absolutely love. Right. This is almost part of my brand statement. But um, you you can you can beat the pavement. You can actually go after clients. You can go after business. You can go after more people to, to identify with your brand. Uh, there's so many different ways you can do that. And I think that all of those ways are push. Um, you're, you're, you're actually having to do the heavy lift. You're having, having to actually go out, get people to drum up their, in, their, their interest. Uh, it's, it, I used to work sales. I used to work, um, what do they call these things as a telemarketer oh, yeah. <laughs> for, for, for three horrible months, um, that I will never get back, uh, that I would never do again. Um, and you would literally pick up the phone and call and, and, and try to get people to, well, at the time we were trying to get them to switch their, to their long distance. Okay. I'm giving my age away now, but <laughs> getting them to switch their long distance. But anyway, um, and, and some of them were interested, 
Some of them had no idea what I was talking about. They didn't even know who their current long distance provider was. Most of the time, they didn't want me to on the phone with them. I don't want these people on the phone with me, honestly, if I'm giving a, keeping it a stack. What I love about live video and about content creation as a whole, it is it takes the complete reverse idea. You get a chance to share with people an issue, share with people a solution. Here's some tips, tricks, best practices. And oh, by the way, I also do this too. Several uh, clients that I have are businesses and they have employed this method of creating steady streams of referral based opportunities. I call them opportunities because they are what you make of them, right? People will call you if you decide to do the work, they will call. Now, whether you actually you know, book the business, make the deal, that's completely up to you. Maybe you don't have systems in place. Maybe you missed the email. Maybe they DM'd you and you didn't see it for four weeks. That's not on me. What I can tell you for sure is that you get into this space and you are there intentionally looking to help people, um, not looking to, you know, bait and switch, right? So there's a lot of bait and switch type of content out there where folks are, you know, hey, you know, you have this issue, call this number and we'll be able to help you. No, <laughs> that's just an advertisement. Right? <laughs> Here's how you solve it, right? Here's how you solve it. I have a, a, a coaching client right now. He he asks these have you ever questions in his in his show. And I'll give you one of them. And I, I, I'm always hesitant to give you this question because most people leave after I ask this question because now they can't unhear it. But I'm going to ask it anyway. So he says, have you ever he's in the finance space, right? He's got this thing called the pill method, which is financial GPS for your money. He says, have you ever wondered why you can pay off a thirty thousand dollar car? Sorry, a hundred thousand dollar car in five years, but it takes the same hundred thousand dollars for a house 30 years. Have you ever? And, and just like, just see, see what happens now. <laughs> All of you are thinking to yourself, damn it. Um, <laughs> so, and here's the, so there's three people now, there's three people watching right now. There's one person who says, I have wondered that. And I want the answer. And he gives them the answer. There's the second person who says, I've never wondered that. And now that I've heard it, I cannot unhear it. And I don't know why Kirk is continuing to talk. I want him to answer that question, right? <laughs> and then there's the third person who says, I have never wondered that and I'm not interested. That's a very small number mm. of the audience. I can guarantee it. All the people that are watching right now. You guys are like, what? How come it's five years and then 30 years over here? Why, why is that? The, the reason why that is, no, I'm not going to answer the question, but the point is <laughs> you are instilling confirmation and curiosity in your audience. You allow your audience to self-identify. I'm not telling you, you need me. You're telling you, you need me. Mm. <laughs> and what that does, that's pulling them in. That's a, that's a pull method that absolutely works. And it's not so much a bait and switch. I, he gives them the value every time. But what that does is it elevates his stature. It allows people to look at him and say, this is a, a financial guru. And I want to know what more he's got. If he's giving out this kind of information for free three days a week on YouTube and LinkedIn, I've got to figure out what else he's got. What system is he mm -hmm. using? So you have a business, you have a product, you have a service and you've been calling, you've been trying to, okay, maybe my audience is over, maybe my, my, my ideal client is over here, maybe my ideal client is over here. I'm saying, stop trying to get them and just put content out that allows them to self-identify with you. Let them decide, I'm interested, I'm not interested, or the number one, this is my, my favorite, I'm curious. I'm curious and that curiosity is sometimes better than somebody saying, I absolutely need you. <laughs> mm. That's good. That's why we have Kirk on, ladies and gentlemen. Um, <laughs> Dust, Dustin has a question, though. He goes, where can I buy a house for 100K? <laughs> yes. Hashtag California Dreaming. Yeah. So, hey, Texas Cal is wide not in open. California, that's for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Washington's beautiful, too. Yeah. California accent. Hey, hey. Yeah. 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 Oh, my gosh. Al so, Lauren, Northern Alabama, you, you can question. definitely get a house for 100K. Go ahead. Go ahead, Lauren. Yeah. Sorry. So I, I have a question because I work with a lot of solopreneurs and I think what you're saying is so intriguing, but I feel like a lot of people have a hard time figuring out where the flip is to mm -hmm. like what goes ahead of a paywall, what goes behind a paywall. And as mm -hmm. someone who does this so expertly on your YouTube channel and getting people over to your courses, I'm curious to know if there's like 
any guidelines you have or you just give it away and trust? Like, wh how do you manage all of that? Um, I used to try to, you know, balance that thing a little bit. Um, yeah. <laughs> I got to be honest with you. I just give it away now. Yeah. I just give it away and, and, and invariably, here's the thing, and business owners and entrepreneurs, they know this. Um, a lot of the audience members who really need that information for themselves to be able to do it for themselves, they actually can't afford my services. Hmm. They actually cannot afford my services. Yeah. Um, and the audience members that can afford my services, they see me sharing with people how to do it as their confirmation that this is the guy I need to hire. And actually that's the guy I want because those guys, they have the deep pockets, they've got the money, they don't have the time. And so now I present my service as luxury, right? And everything luxury costs more. Mm -hmm. Everything that, you know, is easy button costs more. So I actually have raised my prices since I started sharing with people. This is what, this is how you do remote production. This is how you run a show. Here's my show flow. Here's what I did for a client last week. Let me show you what, what assets we create for a live show. People are like, oh my God. Uh, now, yes, there are the DIYers out there who are like, thank you so much. Subscribe, subscribe, subscribe. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I'm going to go create my own. And then there are those who are like, thank you for confirming that you're the guy. Right. I, I can't tell you how many discovery calls I've had where folks say, hey, Kirk, season two, episode six. That's the design I want for my show. Just mm. what, Now, what they're saying to me is I'm not looking for a remote producer. I'm looking for you. Mm. Now I can put whatever price I want on it. Because they're not looking for a general person. They're looking for just me. <laughs> so, I'm, I'm trying my and they know you. <laughs> so by the way, it's Kirk, it's Kirk Nugent .com, everybody. If you want to go to Kirk Nugent, yeah, 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 Kirk yeah, yeah. Nugent .com, So make sure you guys check him out. Yes. Um, yes, yes, yes. You know, Thank you, so much. you saying this made me think of um, what Jay Bear said a long time ago. He said, just because you give somebody the recipe, it doesn't make them a chef. And I was Absolutely like, Absolutely not. Uh, that's great. Ah. And so, um, and, and, Another thing you can do, like, once again, I want to go to people who are just maybe starting out, don't know where to go. The, what I did is I always, I knew how to push the buttons. I knew how to do a live show. Um, and so I decided to get people on with me. And when I started Manly Pinterest Tips, the the show, back on Google+, Plus, there you go, Chris Stone, I did, I did the- Google+. The Plus. Get, Google+. Plus. Um, I got people who had way bigger followings than me, and we did a show together. Well, that increased my- you know, people subscribing to me. And that's what this show is. I bring on people like Lauren and Kirk and I sit and press buttons and I soak up the information. Um, and that's, that's something you can do. Like find people who are, you want, you want to talk to and talk to them, just do it live where you can have people come in. And so I think what you were saying is like, yes, you know, show how I'll give you. Yeah, go ahead. I got to piggyback on that. Um, this is a, uh, I had a client who said to me, okay, Kirk, I'm in this, you know, regulated industry. I want to do, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a medium sized fish in this massive pond. And there are some big fish over that I'd want to do work with. How can live video help me? I'm giving this to you for free. So I said to them, okay, this is what we can do. Let's create a show. It's like, but what, why are we creating a show, Kirk? But let's create a show. And you tell me all, give me five names of five the, the different businesses that you want to work with. And so they gave me those five names. We drafted a show format that allows that guest to look like an absolute rock star. And then we sent them invitations. We created all the assets. We created the platforms. We made this show look like it had been established for years. We sent the invitations. They booked all five of those guests for their show. As part of their booking the five guests for the show, we said we want a pre-show call. In those pre-show calls, that client of mine booked the business with those five big fish yeah. before the show. <laughs> now, now, they paid me to run the show, but they couldn't right. care less. Do you know how many people watch that show, Jeff? Two. Two. <laughs> yeah. Two people watch the show. They but then the, the replay group. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah. But the, the point wasn't the show. The point was to put them in the room with the people that they wanted to do business with. You know, this is definitely part of that push pull method. Yeah, I, I totally agree. I so one of the, what I, I have a friend who actually asked, it was, he lost his job for a long time. And so he started a podcast and he did the same thing. He actually is interviewing people who are the same types of business that he wants to consult with. And by the time, 
you know, before they even start the, the podcast episode, he's booked a it's, meeting and got the business. I mean, so it's just, it, the, so this pull thing works. But the th- I think, let's talk about this, Kirk, because this is a big deal. Because we have all know those people who do live shows or their personality is like a used car salesman. Like, they're just waiting for you to stop talking so they can talk about themselves, right? That's not, mm. that's not pull. You are actually no, giving not. content and giving information, and you're very... That's correct. It has to come from my... Your soul is what I think is like you want to give, you want to help, you want to see others succeed. You're not just waiting yeah. a beat to try to get something from somebody else. So talk about that and the way to do that yeah. and not come across yeah. that way. And I know Lauren has some questions yeah. too after that. So go ahead. Yeah, no, there's that. You hit the nail on the head. When I, I alluded earlier to this concept of your why has to be bigger than your numbers. It's got to be bigger than your numbers. It's got to be bigger than, and numbers can take on many different forms and facets. I know for our entrepreneurs and business owners out there, your numbers may look like, hey, closed business, right? But it's your why has to be bigger than that. Even for your business, I'd say, it's got to be bigger than that. The reason why you got into this thing was for some larger purpose that's what i would assume you wanted to help people in a certain way you wanted to pro- to provide a solution to a specific problem uh a mentor of mine says that there's you know <laughs> our ability to earn a living our ability to make money is commensurate with the amount of problems there are in the world so once <laughs> there's no more problems in the world we can't make any more money do you think we'll ever not have problems in the world the answer is no and so at at the end of the day i think there is a genuine a desire that you that one should possess to be able to to do this successfully. But here's the other thing too: I've, if you don't like having conversations with people, if you actually don't like engaging with folks, that's going to come across on camera as well. So it's it's not so much that there is you know we just employ these methods and we go with it. Actually, you got to find the right person. Um, mm-hmm. And and Stephanie Liu, uh, I know she's changed to Garcia now, but she does a mm-hmm. phenomenal job of presenting herself as a host so so yes remote producer but now as a host because she just naturally has this thing on camera i'd have the same you two both have the same you you could literally present yourself as a live show host and so now businesses say okay boom i want to hire kirk not telling you something that's you know a concept this has actually happened hey kirk we want you to come in we want you to host this live show for us because we want this conversation to be engaging. We we want the conversation itself to really check the box with that two-way uh, conversation, that value proposition that we want with our audience online. But yes, we have these other uh, you know goals that we'd like to reach as well. But, mm-hmm. but we want to make sure that we have this really engaging conversation where it's, it's a back and forth. It feels natural and organic. It doesn't feel like, uh, let me ask this question and you just wait. And then once they answer that, okay, that's nice. And next question and you you wait, no, no, no. It's an actual conversation where it's like, oh yeah. Like we, you know, uh, we talked about your dog coming in earlier. I was actually waiting to see it happen. Like that's a part of a real conversation. That's part of real interaction that would happen when we're live and when we're live and by live, I mean, actually in person, like if we were all sitting at a coffee shop talking, the three of us, this would be kind of how the conversation is. And if we can figure out a way, if you can, as a host, make a, create an environment and hold space for people to really feel natural and organic in that conversation in that way, you check those boxes for your audience. Your audience doesn't feel like I'm just being sold to. No, that was a great experience. And yes, I did receive some information that I might want to check into later, but that was a great experience. So, so that, you know, balancing that seesaw is also part of the puzzle as well. And again, it's creating not, uh, additional industries, additional titles for LinkedIn, additional uh, spaces for those of us who have the gift of gab, as you can tell I have, right? <laughs> Way over time and I'm just still talking. But those who have the gift of gab, that you can actually create spaces for yourself. Yeah. Well, we have we have time, uh, Lauren. I want you to ask. You have a final question <laughs> as we wrap things up because, I, like, we could, I could talk to Kirk all day. Both of you guys, I could talk to you all day. So, <laughs> what what final question do you have for Kirk, Lauren? So, I think you know, for folks who maybe feel intimidated by that, maybe they don't think they have the gift of gab. Like, what are some of the the practical, tactical things they can do to open up to that vulnerability and curiosity without the need to push? Like, we're we're in a transition point. We're moving towards mm. this with. Kind of going back to the beginning of the conversation with now creators, everyday folks are kind of at the helm in a lot of ways. Mm-hmm. What what can help people who are intimidated by that prospect start to open that door for themselves? Stories. Tell your story. 
tell your story, find, Brilliant. listen, become a expert, as they say, earn a PhD in you, right? The old adage says, be you, because everybody else is taken. You become an expert in you and like all of the stories that make up Kirk, I have ways that I can tell them to exemplify different things that I'm trying to, points that I'm trying to get across. Those stories are mine. Nobody else can tell those stories. So guess what? I've got a 43 years of stories that I can pull from, right? That I can share with others. And guess what happens when I tell stories? I go into a non-selling place that is a selling sweet spot. I am mm -hmm. comfortable when I'm telling my stories because I don't need notes for my stories. I lived it. <laughs> so if I can figure out ways to, so for a business owner that's out there that doesn't know the story of the business, like, why did you start this business? Why did you want to solve this problem? You know, did your son have this problem and you stumbled on the solution? Now you're providing this service. Tell that story. Find ways to chop that thing up, make it small, five minutes, you know, sh share different pieces of it. That's your content. Your story is your ultimate cheat code because your story is yours. It's like your fingerprint. Nobody else has it. Share it because nobody else can share it. Okay, I'm sorry. <laughs> so that, that's awesome. So I, let's, sh let's share uh, Kirk Nugent's story. So Kirk, where can people go? find you and all the amazing stuff you do your youtube channel your new show all that stuff make sure you make sure yeah. you uh, tell everybody uh, so they can find it uh, even if they're listening on the podcast yeah it's it's right there on the screen he put it there kirkarnugent.com if you put a slash card after that thing you're going to find my mm -hmm. digital card it's got all the things on it but kirkarnugent.com is our our main hub on the web i am actually adding a page to a piece to that card that kind of highlights the new show. Uh, but there's several different ways that you can get it, get access to that. But man, listen, I would love to, to meet with any of you, to chat with any of you. If there's something that was said, you want to dive a little deeper on, I always offer, you know, a quick 15 minute uh, free call that's there on that same page, kirkarnugent.com slash card. Let's chat it up. Let's see if there's something that I can do that would help you get unstuck, that will help you, you know, take that next step in your journey. Um, maybe you just want to hang out and chat for 15 minutes. I don't care, but <laughs> I, I, I throw that out there. Cause I just feel like, you know, a part of that two way conversation is just being able to follow up, answer those questions and, and keep the conversation going. So I want to say a word of thanks to the two of you for hosting and for, for allowing me to come through and hang out today. I always love coming on this platform, Jeff. I think what you've built here is absolutely phenomenal. And the way you engage with your audience is something to be replicated by others. So. This well, I appreciate it, my friend. And by the way, for you guys listening, that's KirkRNugent.com, K-I-R-K-R-N-U-G-E-N-T.com. Make sure you guys go follow him <laughs> everywhere. Um, and also our amazing co-host, Lauren Gaggioli. Tell people where they can find you. Well, if you can spell it, it's at LaurenGaggioli.com. <laughs> and there it is. Uh, I also have a new course at BigYLife.com. Yes, and make sure you go back and listen to her episode. It's amazing. Gaggioli is spelled G-A-G-G-I-O-L-I -G -G for you guys listening on the podcast. And with that, we thank you guys so much for listening. I appreciate you, Dustin, Gary, Chris, uh, Facebook user. I don't know your name, but everybody who stopped by. <laughs> Domino Entertainment. I know that Kirk brought his audience over as well. Uh, right, Dustin, right. I appreciate you, my friend. Thank you guys so much for watching, and we'll see you guys next time. Bye, everyone. Have a great weekend. Attention all campers, this is your camp director Leslie Samuel here and I'm here to tell you about the most epic event of the year, Creator Camp. Are you ready for Creator Camp? Because we are ready for you. We've been hanging with the counselors, prepping the s'mores and gearing up for an amazing camp. So what can you expect at Creator Camp? Well, let me tell you, an epic kickoff party where you'll get to meet everyone from your workshop leaders to your camp counselors. And yes, the whole eCamp crew will be there too. Hands-on workshops from top experts in subjects you care about. Meet your favorite eCamp fam members, amazing food and drinks all included with your ticket. Fun activities and excursions like a ghost walk in Salem, Massachusetts, wine tasting, and brewery tours. And of course, a talent night to showcase your skills. This is the event you've been waiting for. The Ecamm fam is taking over Amesbury, Massachusetts, and we don't want you to miss your chance to be a part of it all in real life. IRL, yo! 
So gather your camping gear, like your laptop and camera maybe, and get ready for a wild adventure at Creator Camp. I can't wait to see you there.